Hey guys, this is Nick, and at the risk of being laughed out of the YouTube Linux sphere, I want to state something. Despite everything you can read or watch on the internet, GNOME isn't a lockdown platform at all. It's actually super customizable thanks to extensions, themes, icon themes, and various tools. You can turn it into anything you're comfortable with. You don't believe me? Stay a while and listen. Just like you should listen to this segue to today's sponsor, which will let you get $100 off your own Linux or gaming server. Thanks to Linode for sponsoring this video. Linode is the best choice to deploy your own Linux or gaming server. Getting started is extremely easy thanks to their app marketplace. You can just pick from one of the many, many apps they offer, select a few configuration options and just one click deploy that server. It's super simple. It works for a development environment, but also for a Minecraft or Valheim server. Among the most notable apps, Linode has Moodle to create your own learning management system and teach and sell courses in minutes, but they also have stuff like Pi-hole to block ads. Go ahead, I don't need the money anyway. From Focal Board, a Trello alternative to Rocket Chat, which is the equivalent to Slack or Teams, Linode has everything you would want. Click the link in the description to get your $100 credits and get started. Let's begin with the obvious, extensions. GNOME can be transformed entirely thanks to extensions. This is a system that lets users completely change the GNOME shell, the desktop itself. By default, GNOME has a very opinionated user interface with its activities view, a hidden dock, workspaces front and center, and no regular applications menu. But you're not stuck with that at all. One example that you won't even have to tweet yourself is in Pop! OS. These guys have built another entire desktop environment on top of GNOME called Cosmic. Now granted, they are also redeveloping this whole desktop environment in Rust instead of basing it on GNOME Shell. But still, what you can use today on Pop! OS is based on GNOME extensions. You get a default dock, visible at all times. You get an apps library with quick access to the folders you created. You get a separate workspaces menu for window management. You get a launcher to quickly start apps without using the menu and auto-tiling features that let you organize your windows quickly or get back to free-floating windows. All of this is based on GNOME extensions. The whole set of them is actually open source and can be installed on other distributions, either through a PPA for Ubuntu-based distros or with a super quick compilation that's done in three command lines. These extensions are probably also in the AUR because, let's be honest, everything is. Another excellent example is Zorin OS, a distro based on Ubuntu that offers many different layouts that all use extensions to mimic the well-known Windows layout or something that looks like Mac OS or Unity or a lot of other familiar operating systems. And no, contrary to popular belief, Elementary OS does not use a tweaked version of GNOME Shell. They use their own thing. Also, Cinnamon, the desktop environment used by Linux Mint, was also just a set of GNOME extensions when it began. Nowadays, it's its own thing, but it has its roots in GNOME 3. But if these pre-made things aren't your cup of tea, you have a whole library of extensions at your fingertips. The easiest way to get to these is to install the app called Extension Manager. It's available on Flathub and lets you not only manage your own extensions, but also browse and install them in one click. If you don't want an app to do that, you can also just head over to extensions.gnome.org and look at them this way. You might even be prompted to install a small browser extension that lets you install them in one click straight from the browser. Easy enough, although for some reason the default GNOME browser, GNOME Web, does not offer this kind of support, which is super weird. You might be overwhelmed with the sheer number of options available, so let's take a look of the most useful ones. One of the most widely seen is Dash to Panel. It's perfect if you want to replicate a familiar Windows-like or KDE-like layout. It basically just lumps everything you would find in the GNOME top bar, in the dock, in the activities view, into a single bottom bar, complete with applications menu, clock, notification icons, and app launchers and running app indicators. It's also super customizable itself, with options like changing the position of the panel itself. That's right, something that Windows doesn't even let you do anymore. Now, who's not customizable now? But there's also the ability to automatically hide it, to change its height, its length, to show various buttons, increase or reduce the margins between applications, to change the running app indicator look, the panel transparency or its color, to show or hide window previews on hover, and a lot more. It's basically a great go-to to start turning GNOME into what you want. It can also be combined with other extensions, like different menus or the all-important app indicator extension. 
If you ever wondered where your system tray notifications had gone in GNOME, well, they just decided to pack up and leave, but you can convince to bring them back thanks to this new extension. App Indicators does what it says, it just lets you add support back for these nasty looking icons in your top bar. Nextcloud, Discord, Steam and a lot more will happily live there, and you even get to choose where to display them. Near the system indicators or somewhere else, you decide. It's something that I personally have not managed to do without yet. I don't like seeing them there, they're ugly and I would prefer them to go away, but there's just no suitable replacement just yet. If you don't like a bottom bar, why not get a dock, an always visible one? Because dash to dock does just that. You'll get the activities dock from GNOME, but always visible on the bottom. You'll get the activities dock from GNOME, but always visible on the bottom, complete with the running app indicators, your application launchers, which are also separated from apps you haven't pinned. You also get a trash can, the plugged in storage devices, and an applications menu. And of course, it's also highly customizable, with the ability to place it on any edge of the screen, changing the size and the scaling, adding or removing various icons like the trash can, showing window previews, or a bunch of appearance preferences to make it look exactly how you want. Now I heard that all the cool kids want to use a dark mode all the time, but what if you want to use a light mode during the day and a dark mode at night? You can also do that, thanks to Night Theme Switcher. It will simply switch your desktop to dark mode, depending on the time of day or on a manual schedule. You can also add a visible button, either in the system menu or near the notifications and clock, to toggle the switch manually. It can switch the GNOME Shell theme and the GTK theme, and you can even decide on different themes for light and dark mode. Light mode could be Advaita, for example, and dark mode could be Kogir Dark. If you're into flashy eye candy and you're nostalgic of the compass days, then the Burn My Windows extension is for you. While not really something you need, it's still super fun. It lets you pick various animations for opening or closing your applications, and even apply them to dialogues. Ranging from actually making your windows catch fire and disappear to being shredded by claws, and if you can decide, you can pick multiple effects and have them randomized, and each effect can be tweaked in terms of duration and scale. Now, I personally can't use it every day, it's way too flashy, but if you want something that will impress your little brother or your cousin, that's definitely it. It's never too soon to get them into Linux, and super flashy effects like that are always the way to go. But what about desktop icons? I might hate them, but that's not everyone's case. For that horrible purpose, why not use Desktop Icons NG? It basically rehabilitates your desktop as an icon and files folder, so you can finally hide that wonderful wallpaper with all sorts of crap you will never sort through or remember is there. It lets you show a trash icon, external drives, network drives, choose their alignment, and even share some settings with Nautilus, so it behaves like a real part of your file management tools. Now finally, for fans of eye candy, there's also something called Blur My Shell. No, it won't blur your window backgrounds, but it will add some nice blur on the background of the activities view based on the wallpaper. Your search view, your activities view, or your apps list will definitely look snazzier with this one. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. You've got network stats, tiling features, you've got workspace indicators, and a lot more. So just Head over to the extension website or use the app to browse and find something that you actually want to use. Of course, you might also want to change the look of your GNOME applications. Small warning here, it won't be easy to do when GNOME 42 arrives, because libadvita basically locks all default apps to the default advita look, until someone figures out a way to bypass it. In the meantime, and as GNOME 42 will take some time to arrive to all distros, you can still have some fun. All you need to do is install GNOME Tweaks, and then look for a theme you like. For that, Gnome Look is your friend. Here you can find a ton of GTK themes to change your windows, buttons, title bars appearance, and a ton of icon themes to change how your desktop looks. Apparently it's now called Rising, although I have no idea what the origin of that word is. Maybe something to do with rice, because rice is beautiful and customizable, I guess? Once you've downloaded a theme, all you have to do is extract it, and place the resultant folder inside one of two directories. Themes go into the .themes folder in your user directory, and icons go in the .icons directory. These are hidden folders, and you might need to create them, they might not be there by default. Don't forget to add the small dot at the beginning of the name. Showing or hiding hidden folders in Nautilus can be done with the press of Ctrl plus H. Once your themes are placed there, open Gnome Tweaks, hit the Appearance tab, and choose the theme you want. 
Cursors work in the same way and can be placed in the dot icons folder as well. And now you can have something that you really want to use that you find beautiful and that looks exactly the way you want it to. It's a super easy way to get a desktop that you really enjoy using and that just looks the way you want it to. Although be aware that some applications might be broken by custom themes, so there's always that possibility. But that's not all. Gnome Tweaks that you just installed. It's a cool program. It lets you change a bunch of settings for your Gnome desktops. The fonts? Yes, that's there with all the installed fonts in your system. If you want to change or disable the mouse cursor acceleration profiles, it's doable as well. If you want to scroll on your touchpad using the edges instead of two fingers, you can do that. Startup applications are also handled there, just like the ability to display weak numbers in the shell calendar, the battery percentage of your laptop, or disabling the hot corner for the activities view. Oh, and I almost forgot, you can also restore the minimize and maximize button using this Gnome Tweaks tool. And also you can tell your system to always center new windows because why would you want them to pop up in a random position? All of that combined makes GNOME very versatile in terms of look, of behavior, and of general user experience. So sure, all these settings might not be available right from the start as options, but that's not the aim for GNOME. So basically, GNOME applies the same mantra as KDE. It's simple by default, powerful when needed. Except in the case of GNOME, all the power is added voluntarily by the user after the fact, when in KDE, all the power is always there lurking in the background whether you want it or not. Of course, this extension system isn't as solid as what KDE offers. Extensions are independent from the main GNOME desktop and might not get updated every time a new version of GNOME is released. They are notorious for taking a bit of time before being compatible with the latest and greatest GNOME. But unless you're on Fedora or Arch or a rolling release that really keeps up with everything new, that won't really be a problem. Now, themes are a different beast altogether. Icons and cursor themes will still be easy to change in GNOME 42 using GNOME Tweaks, but the GTK theme is going to be way trickier. GNOME Tweaks won't be able to change the theme for apps using libadvita, so they will stick to the default advita look. But I am fairly sure that someone in the community will find a way to replace the whole libadvita style sheet in the future. So don't be put off or refrain yourself from trying out GNOME because of something you read or watched online. While the default GNOME experience is very simple and maybe too simple for a lot of people, it can be completely overhauled and turned into something that you love. Just like you love using your new Linux laptop or desktop thanks to today's sponsor. Slimbook sells devices running Linux out of the box. They are based in Valencia, Spain, but they ship worldwide and they have all keyboard layouts that you might want. They have devices for all price points, all use cases, including for example the Slimbook One, which is a very small form factor PC that you can put on top of your desk. It has a magnificent aluminium enclosure, it's got powerful AMD Ryzen CPUs and integrated GPUs, it can be upgraded to a lot of RAM and a lot of hard drive storage space, it's just super cute and tiny and I just, mm, I love it. So yes, if you want one, you can just click the link in the description below and get your own or get any of the other laptops or desktops that Slimbook offers. So thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to throw a comment at your screen. And if you didn't like the video, you can also dislike it and tell me why in the comments as well. And if you want to help me make more of these videos, you can join my amazing Patreon subscribers or my YouTube members. Both get access to the weekly Patreon cast and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.